my first Forza Horizon game. I just want to make that clear, because I keep hearing that some are disappointed with Forza 5 because it's more or less, in quotes, bigger Forza 4. Obviously, I get this argument. Certain franchises that I've been playing since my youth, such as Pokemon or New Super Mario Bros., have definitely gotten a bit stale to me. However, since this complaint just doesn't even apply to me, I am having a big blast with this game. I want to know that I'm playing this on my Xbox Series X and that I'm subscribed to Game Pass, but I'm liking the game enough to want to buy a physical copy to go in the collection. So let's get into this. Forza Horizon 5 is a racing game where the player can win cars and deck them out to their liking. I'm not a huge car guy myself, but it's commendable that they have at least 500 different types of cars in the game, with more launching over time. They all control very differently too, as their stats will be visible to the player on a scale of 1 to 10. Maybe I'm just dumb or something, but it feels like even a point or two difference is enough to make a genuine impact on the car's performance. Even cars that have similar stat-wise, they can feel just completely different. And then, of course, there's the fact that they have Jeeps and other off-roading vehicles that offer more variety in the cars at one can use. They're slow as ass, but they have variety and versatility. Then, of course, there are sports cars that are fast as ass. There is a story, but honestly, I spend most of my time exploring away from the objective. I can't explain why, but some of my most fun in Forza 5 simply come from discovering new roads and crashing into everything that I see. When a road has been completely driven on, the player will unlock the road. I think I'm currently at 400 or 500 roads out of 560 or something discovered. There are also point signs, which will give the player points if they crash into it. Makes enough sense. There are also fast travel signs that the player can utilize once they destroy them as well. However, it's not exactly the most intuitive. I bought a house for $2 million that let me fast travel anywhere for an additional small fee. Damn, that's a lot of money. This house is located in the Baja region. When I mean anywhere, I mean literally anywhere. I can pick a road that I've never been on before and fast travel there. The fee is roughly around 5,000 credits, but the way the player just racks up points, it basically feels like it's free. Many games handle fast travel decently. They'll let you fast travel to places if you've already been. But I think Forza 5 is the first to let me fast travel near anywhere that I want. I guess there is one catch. It has to be on a road, so I can't just end up on the beach or something. The game performs brilliantly and looks stunning. It really is so much fun letting it rip, going 200 miles per hour and looking at the environment as you go by. This is definitely one of the best looking games thus far. Thanks to the SSD and the Xbox Series X, loading screens are done in just seconds. Similarly to Psychonauts 2 and Halo Infinite, there are two modes that one can select. Performance mode will tune down the visuals just a bit, but will ensure that the game runs at a constant, or at least a near constant, 60 frames per second. The other mode is called Quality Mode. This will lower the FPS to 30 frames per second, but the game will look just heavenly. I heard that both these modes look great on a 4K monitor, but I'm stubborn and don't want to pay for a 4K display yet. I'm thinking about going up to 1440p from 1080, but I'm still undecided. You know, I should probably talk about other things that one can do, such as the story. The story has a few different types of missions going on in it. Like, one of them has the player drive near the eye of a hurricane to get a picture. Another one has the player drive around a temple-like structure and take pictures of their surroundings. There are four quest lines that the player can tackle. In order to lock future ones, the player will have to gain experience by advancing in the other storylines, or just by doing random shit. Yeah, the story itself is kind of fine, I guess, but I really treated Forza 5 like a giant playground. The last time I got this sucked into an open world is probably like The Witcher 3 or Skyrim. Whenever I want to play a game where I do anything but the main objective, I play Forza 5. Another good portion of my game time was spent just seeing how high my combos can get. Whenever the player performs a specific action in a short amount of time, like drifting, passing an AI, smashing into something, going a certain speed, burning out, among plenty of other actions, it will add to the player's skill chain. Occasionally, the radio will play a skill song. When this occurs, the player will receive double the skill points for a few minutes. I've never actually heard the songs, though. I personally think the game's soundtrack is pretty not good. I should also know that the skill chain will be broken when the car smashes into something, and all those beautiful points will be lost. To my knowledge, the multiplier can get up to 5 or 10 when a skill song is played. Whenever a new action is thrown in there, point 0.1 will be added to the multiplier. Point 0.1 will also be added when one of the skills that is already in the skill chain is performed again to a certain degree. I find the easiest way to get a high score is just to drift like crazy while crashing into everything. So what do these skill points actually unlock? The trees are different for each car, but they all share similar ones. One of the upgrades that I find the most helpful is the second life one. This will allow the skill chain to continue after the car has been crashed once. This has been a huge lifesaver for me as I eat ass at this game. I am the goddamn king of getting a ridiculously high combo, then ruining it. Other ones will give the player experience points. Let them get skill points easier. We'll give them money. Hell, some of them will even war them with another car. A common one is letting the player spin the wheel a couple of times. Speaking of that, I think that 
plays into one of the things that Forza 5 just does so nicely. The game is constantly rewarding the player with random stuff. Wheel spins are common and a great way for the player to earn money, new cars, experience, new clothes, new horn sounds. It is never ending. There are, at least at the time of recording this video, 1,876 accolades one can earn. And you guessed it, plenty of them give the player items. I think that this is something that more games need to learn how to do. Keep the player engaged. Whenever I sat down for a Forza session, it would always end up being well over an hour because I felt like I literally couldn't stop. I'd be so close to a point sign that I'd have to smash it. So close to connecting a road that I can completely discover it. So close to getting a level that I'd be awarded another spin wheel for. It's just so addicting driving around in this amazing looking world trying to do everything that I can. Just one screenshot of the map and Forza 5 shows how much there really is to this game. I debated buying the treasure map for the game, which will reveal a lot of the game's locations, but part of the fun in Forza, in my opinion, is just driving around and seeing what's up. I forgot to mention earlier when I was talking about unlocking stuff that I unlocked a Spiral Mountain car horn. That's pretty damn amazing. Man, Microsoft is making great use of that Banjo-Kazooie IP. I mean, what else would they do with it? Not make a new game or anything. That would be absurd, right? One feature that I think is pretty neat is the rewind feature, and as it sounds like, this will rewind the game by a few seconds and this includes your car's movement. This could be a godsend if you're putting anus to anus out there in a race, just to screw up towards the end to ram into a wall or something. There is a catch though, as you will lose some of your earnings when you cross the finish line. Fair enough, it basically is a crutch after all. I feel like the best advice would be to stay away from it, but I can't. I've used it as my crutch. I'm not good at the game, damn it. This isn't just restricted to races either. This can also be used on the world map itself. This can help if one gets stuck or you flip your car over, you know, something along those lines. So what are some negatives on Forza 5? I'd say the big one is that things can definitely get a bit repetitive. To be fair, a decent bit of this is on me as I like to drive similar cars on my starter Toyota, but I branched out a bit towards the end. Now I drive a Porsche for most of my activities because it's wicked fast. I picked up the stupid green Jeep for off-roading activities too. The races themselves were fun for a while, but ultimately, they start to blend after a while. It almost feels like a Ubisoft game where you pick one spot of the open world, do an objective, go to the other spot of the map, do that objective. The difference here is that the gameplay loop is actually fun, much better than any Ubisoft open world garbage. It feels repetitive enough though that I thought at the very least it was worth a mention here. The other problem is that I have faced a bit of performance issues. I tried to do this one race here, and the game just did not let me do it. I'm not sure what was up, but I tried this race a couple of times. At a certain part, the cars just hit an invisible wall and can't move forward. After starting the race a couple of times, I tried to bag out to the main map, and the game froze. It's not the end of the world, but I had a couple of crashes happen on me in my time with this game. I also want to note that sometimes quick resume, that just simply doesn't work. Other games like NHL 21 and Halo Infinite can be in the background for literal days, and I can pick up right where I left off. With Wars of 5, it stays in the background for a very short amount of time. Not a deal breaker, but it's a nice when a game works with quick resume, as it is a neat feature. That's really all I have for the negatives. That's Forza Horizon 5, in my opinion. I've spent roughly 15 hours or so with the game and wanted to give my thoughts on it. The game at its core is definitely fun and fast, but it can get a bit repetitive. I personally can't find too much else to say. It's kind of like Metroid Dread. I really like my time with the game, but I just don't have that much to say on it. I like it because, as I said before, this was my open world game that I got lost in for a couple of months this year. I'd give it a 5 out of 7.